Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to talk about the project that I'm working on. So as a YouTuber who makes videos about web development, I needed to have a website and that's why I made curiousstripe.com. But I was wondering what should I put on it. Of course the free courses that I make on YouTube, but one thing that I don't like about making videos is like I'm talking, you guys are listening and you guys maybe use that in your project maybe you don't so there's not like a real feedback loop you know so i wanted to make something interactive where people can have fun i can have fun with making problems and you can solve those problems and that's the reason why i create this coding problems let's check out what that is so once i click on that get started button or you can get there by clicking on this problems link in nav menu and then you'll be given list of problems to solve. Let's check out this reverse string problem. Now, once I click on it, then I get this interface where I can solve a coding problem. You'll be given a problem title, and then you'll be given problem description, how you should solve that particular problem. This is a pretty straightforward problem where you'll be given a string and you need to reverse that string. Now, we will also be given test cases for which we have these inputs and the expected result is this and in actual column, you will be given the output of the coding problem that you are solving and it's going to give you status if your solution is correct or not. And in languages, I'm giving two options. One is C sharp and another is JavaScript. Let's try to solve this problem using JavaScript and then we'll try to solve it by C Sharp. So in JavaScript, the first two arguments that Node.js receives, they're useless. We don't really care for them. So I'm slicing them and then I'm using the third input, the third argument, which is actually this. Now we'll need to reverse this input. For that, I'm going to use array. So First, we'll convert the string into array and then we'll reverse that array and then we'll join that so that we can get another string. So when I start typing array, you'll see that I get this nice intelligence to complete my sentence. And when I hit arrow and hit dot, then it's going to give me a list of functions that array has. So I'm going to select from to convert my string into an array. So when I hit this round parenthesis, then you'll also see nice interlessons for which we can, you know, select different options for from function that is also there. Now I'm going to convert the string into an array and then let's reverse that string. And then we can use join method to convert that reversed array into a string. So now this input is actually our, our output now. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in my console log and click on play test cases, which is going to run this program and it's going to print the output in this actual column. And you'll see that the status says tick mark. That means our output is correct. Now, if I try to print something else, let's say if I'm just typing a string, which is something else, and if I click on play test, then it's going to print something else in actual column and it's going to tell me that your test cases are failing. That way we know that if the solution is correct or not. Now let's try to solve this in C sharp. So I'm going to select C sharp in the drop down, and I will be given a console program where I'm receiving this input as the first argument and then I need to convert the string into reverse string. So let's try to do the same thing like we did for JavaScript solution. I'm going to convert the string into a character array. So as I start typing, you see that I'm not getting the intelligence that I was getting for JavaScript because JavaScript editor, the Monaco editor that I'm using is better for JavaScript than for C Sharp. And that's the reason we are not getting a nice intelligence here, but we can still write C Sharp programs and execute them. 
So I'm going to convert this string into an array. And then I'm going to use array to reverse reverse the string. I'm going to pass value here. Reverse the array actually. And then I'm going to use string join method to convert convert that value into string again so that we get the reverse string. Now let's click on play test and see how long it takes. Once I click on play test, then what it's going to do is it's going to take the C-sharp program and put it in a C-sharp project. It's going to compile that project. It's going to create that exe. And in that exe, I'm going to pass these inputs so that it can give me the output. So there are a lot of things happening here and that's the reason why it's a little slower than JavaScript, but that's how C Sharp is. So this is the coding problem that I was talking about. This is what I have made on QStripe.com. I hope that you guys have fun with it. I'm going to have a lot of fun with making these problems and having a play around so that we can learn programming. Now, before I end the video, I wanted to talk about the stack that I'm using for this website. So first thing first, I'm using Blazor. One reason why I'm using Blazor is because I love Blazor. I'm very comfortable with Blazor and that's, that's the main reason why I'm using Blazor. The reason why I'm not using Blazor WebAssembly is because, you know, this site needs to get crawled by search engines and I wanted to make something which is getting which is rendering the UI on the server side. And that's the reason why I'm using Blazor server. And for editor, I'm using Monaco editor, which is built by Microsoft people. And uh, it's an NPM package. I've installed it and you can play around with it. You'll see there are so many languages that it supports. And there are also themes, which I'm thinking of integrating in my website too. So this is the editor that I'm using. And for storing the data, I'm using Cosmos DB. The reason why I'm using Cosmos DB is because MySQL and SQL Server are super expensive. And Cosmos DB gives me a free tier to get started with. And that's the reason why I'm using Cosmos DB. And maybe I'll make a video of how you can get started with Cosmos DB for free too. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have fun solving these problems. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.